I do believe we may be looking at a top 10 day weather-wise in Lincoln, so enjoy that. Uh, it's been it's been about a month since we've had a chance to talk to our next guest. Need to make it more regular as we finish out 2018. We love to talk tech, social media, gadgets, and marketing with Jason Peterson of Generate Marketing. Good morning, Jason. How are you doing today? Good morning, Jack. Glad to have you yeah. with us. It's been uh, way yeah. too long, man. It has been a while. It has been a while, but we're getting back. Summer's kind of out of routine, but we're getting things going again. School's back in session. Football's getting started as well. A lot of schedules are normalizing, so we'll have a lot more frequent discussions with you as we get into the fall and then the winter. And I want to start with the thing that you've got in front of you because yes. um, I actually was just uh, in, in, in the market uh, uh, earlier this week with my mom helping her buy a laptop, and we didn't end up getting what you have in front of you. Um, because it was, it was, we were looking for something different. It was a little bit out of the price range. But you've got a Microsoft Surface in front of you. Dude. Um, I saw them Dude. At, at the store. They were close to 1000 bucks, And so I said, this must be a pretty incredible machine for, for that much. Tell, tell us what it is and what you've thought of it so far. Okay. So you know me. I try about everything. I right. have Macs, PCs. I've had Chromebooks. Um, so my big thing is it's been the debate forever, as you and I know, is like Mac, it's iPad or it's MacBook Air. There's no touch in the desktop side. For most, no big deal. As we've talked, kind of the fold the hinge is kind of cheesy on the PCs. Now, yeah. for me, I'm an artist, and I do design and graphic design, and so I've really wanted to use, and I heard really good things about the handwriting, the Microsoft Ink. And I gotta tell you, this is the one where you can pull it apart. Um, it's really interesting. Um, I mean, this is probably the best laptop I've ever tried, including my Macs. It is amazing. Microsoft has built probably the best their hardware. It's it's comparable to the MacBook Pros. It's That's crazy. interesting because you look at it and it looks to me like one of those when they start for tablets were first out and then they started adding the keyboards to them, the kind of the flimsy keyboards to them. And I've got that perception of it in my head. That's obviously you're saying it's it's better than that, and it's certainly comparable to a laptop. Well, so to me, like you know, the, they're trying to make the iPad Pro like the replacement to the desktop. Here's the issue is that Mac iOS does not run desktop apps. So if you're running a browser, it's awesome, but like I can't run Photoshop and you can't run certain things. It's gonna still treat it mobile. So Chromebooks are great for that. Here's the issue, they don't run some of the Windows apps. Now that's changing a little bit. Now again, you know, it, getting a good MacBook, MacBook Pro, I mean, dude, those are, you know, 1,000, 1,200, 2,000 yeah. bucks. So yeah. it's in that space. But I would say they've that's come the down. That's the competitor. And, that's I mean, the that's competitor. The, we're competing are, with MacBook we're, Airs because you can get a you can get a, a a Windows laptop, a good Windows laptop for half price of, of this right now. Right? And you know what's interesting is, so I did. I got an HP for seven fifty, and it sounded like an airplane engine. So like the thing is, the whole I tell people, whatever the laptop is, you can get laptops that don't have the spinning hard drive. So if you see a SSD, that stands for solid state drive. What that means is is that there's no moving parts. It's like the stuff that's in our phones and those things. So the heat is not an issue, big thing. So, but to me, what's what's amazing is, again, the handwriting and the technology, like I used this back in the day and it was terrible for like their pen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know the Apple Pencil is amazing. The, the Microsoft one's right there too. It has a battery in it. It is exceptionally flexible. Um, again, I've used it both in tablet as a tablet. Um, the apps are not quite as good, obviously, as the, the, some of the apps that they have for iOS as far as drawing. But, dude, I, I did a logo the other night for the first time on a tablet with my, my pen, and it was amazing. Because as I was looking at laptops just, just last week, and I noticed about half of the ones that I looked, like, looked at did have that that monitor that yep. you could you could you, you could, could fold in half yeah, you, you could, could do that kind of stuff spin around and that wasn't necessarily something that we were interested in as, no. as i was looking with my mom because she was basically she wasn't going to use it for you know the like touch a, she wasn't going to use it right. for a tv screen she didn't even care they all have touch screens or almost all of them had touch right. screens now which wasn't a, a big deal particularly either so we didn't go with any of those that was kind of an added added feature but that that's more kind of what you're getting at here with what this does but you're saying yeah to me as a hybrid a i was gonna say like my wife she just got a macbook air that's great she doesn't need touch macbook airs are probably in my opinion the best deal on a mac right now because the pros unless you're like a crazy thing macbook air is like this has a 14 hour battery life like it's crazy mm -hmm. so to me like 
Microsoft just figured out, and Windows 10, my, I, I feel like it's kind of potato potato. They're about the same in terms of polish, ease of use. I mean, again, ever since like, and I can't tell you the CEO who's in charge, but he, he's got his game face on. He's figured out how to make Windows, in my opinion, a lot more solid and tight than it was before. I, I will tell you this, I, and I think I've mentioned it with you before. It's been about three, two and a half years now. I got an iMac for the first time. Yes. And pricey. But, yes. But got one for a number of reasons, including and particularly my wife is, is very into photography, and there was a lot to do with that. I have, I don't think I'd get another one. I honestly don't think I'd, I'd get another one. That just the performance from the beginning has no been kidding. has just been slow. It's it is it's slow, and I'm I've been thinking about bringing it to one of the one of the the folks here in Lincoln who who deal with with IMAX. You and, and I should say, we should talk. I should come in and take a peek at it. You you, you should maybe you totally. should absolutely. It is just totally and I don't know. We've got tons of pictures on it, and maybe that's part of it. Maybe we need to offload those somewhere else. But it is. The performance of it has been disappointing almost from day one. And I think and to I, me, I never expected that. For that is kind of right price. now, I mean, I think there was this flirting thing where Mac was going to kill the, the laptop. And, and it sounds sacrilegious, but the reason why is they make no money on those, literally. I mean, 90% of their revenue is tied to the mobile platform of the watch, the iOS, mm -hmm. the App Store. So it's kind of a cult thing. Now, they just finally started updating the hardware, but it was, it was long in tooth, it was old. So I think to me that was one of my criticisms was is, gosh, like if I want to buy one that's got some horsepower right now, I don't know if I want to buy a Mac. Right. Um, so to you, I, I agree. I mean, I'm kind of, again, I, I, as you know, dabble in everything, but I think the, the debate has been how does Apple blend or make the two work together? So that, and, and again, Microsoft has chosen it to be one, right? Apple, and then you got Chrome who said, I'm a browser. So there's benefits to all. Again, I'm more on the, I use the handwriting. So for me, this is amazing. For others, not a big deal. But just the quality of it, I mean, this is metal. It's It's got, it's just, it's, you can just tell when you get a quality machine. I'm just head. really impressed with it. I, I just remember when I got a, I got a, it wasn't a Chromebook, but it was a, a Windows. It was a cheaper Acer, yeah, you, Acer laptop. Yeah, I remember that. This was like five years yeah, ago, you maybe. you got like a Windows, it was like 8.1. I, I still use it, but that, that, when that new Windows came out, it was the first time I used it. And they were trying to be both laptop and, and tablet at the same time. Yeah, and it was really It was this big deal. You could switch from windows to their microsoft tablet mode and i was like i don't want this no. tablet mode no. i don't no it was i don't bad. have the touch screen is fine there's occasional situations where i use this but this tablet mode is superfluous i just want to be on windows essentially and and i still i gotta be honest and i don't do the art stuff that you right, do and i can right. see why yeah, that's I'm, different. I'm, I'm a different different i person. still and i have got friends who have ipads i've got I, I i i've got some cheap amazon tablets but tablets for me are only useful for consuming content. Consuming content. Yeah, I was going to say entertainment for for video. Really for for video. And I think that's the thing that's shaken out is tablets are not replacing laptops. I really feel like that's to me is like you said is people there don't is think that, we're though. Well, because you can't. There is limitations on the flexibility. Now, again, this may all shake out, but to me, there is the at the end of the day. You know, we thought the laptop was dead, which is not, but. You know, I think for me is I'm always looking for the refinements, you know, always when they come out with the stuff, we know the leading edge stuff is always crappy. Um, so to me, Microsoft is focused more on polish. They've kind of said, we're good at this. I mean, we know they're partnering with with Walmart to say we're going to fight Amazon. So to me, all this stuff that's shaking out, um, it's it's not so much innovation as is refinement of alignments to fight everybody in these monstrous you know, Gilded Age, maybe, gigantic titans. Maybe that young, late 80s Bill Gates who was on the verge of killing Apple at that point and didn't quite do it, maybe now is the time. <laughs> and killing Netscape, remember that? Absolutely. I mean, the dude was ruthless. He was a ruthless he, he nerd was broke, at the time. People don't remember no, they that. Don't. I, mean, I mean, when you and I were college, they were going through their antitrust stuff. And again, people have to remember that this is, again, the in my opinion, the interesting story of the Tech Titans then is Jobs and Bill Gates hated each other but respected each other. Now, at the end of the day, uh, it's kind of like some of the old dogs where I think Bill Gates came around and he has a conscience. I mean, his wife's a teacher. But to me is they invested when Jobs took over in 97. This is still legendary. He goes to Bill Gates and to basically float 
like I don't know, it was like I want to say fifty million dollars. I mean, it was pocket change. And that, that was of, almost dead. That, that was, was it. Was yeah. dead. They were literally like months away from bankruptcy. And Bill Gates, they invest. They basically say we're going to commit to Microsoft Office and the Mac platform. The iMac comes out, and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So again, it's for those that are not as old as us. And back when, honestly, liking a Mac was like the dumbest thing in the world. It is amazing how things have evolved. But it is. Bill Gates is single-handedly responsible for supporting Apple and how allowing them not yeah. to die. Interesting. Crazy. All right, so let me ask you this. I know you're very early on. We, I've been, uh, I'm an Amazon yes. home assistant person. I've talked about it a lot because you can listen to KLIN on your, on your Echo or Echo Dot now. And so I've used that. I've, I've said on the air, it's boiled down to 90% of our use of it is twofold. Grocery lists and shopping yes. lists, which I, are in, I, I think have made a huge difference for us. And then music is is the other one. That's the vast majority. I like to play Name That Tune while I empty the sure. dishwasher <laughs> or Jeopardy while I empty <laughs> the dishwasher. But beyond that, that's what we I don't have smart devices yet. I right. don't really use them for that. Uh, there isn't, there isn't a whole lot uh, of other functions. I don't do a lot of the news briefings and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I really yeah. don't. But... But listen to radio, listen to music. I do do that. You now have the Google Home. I've not played with one at all. Yes. I've not seen one. You're you're new to it. But why did you set? Because you 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 had had the yes, Echoes I've before. had the since January. And I mean, in fairness to that, I think we don't have a smart home. Um, we tend to like use those devices in utilitarian means, meaning that because Holly and I think work in it, like. We don't need the reminder systems. Like we've got all that built into our tech that we use. So some right. of those efficiencies. Use your phone for that. Yeah, and like we do use Spotify, but we are an Apple Music. I know some people hate it, but we've mm -hmm. just kind of ended up using that. So um, my kids ask it questions. That's what they do, and they're kind of we're kind of that inquisitive. Hey, what is this? What is this? And Am <laughs> and Alexa always asks <laughs> answers these stupid things or doesn't know. So for us, it was kind of like, eh. so I ask it the weather. That's what I do. So the Google one is a different spin. I don't know if it has as much of the tasky things, but it is all on the premise of the knowledge of Google search. Which, which the Google app, when Siri first came out, I remember talking to you about this over and over again, Google had an app that was the same principle where you could ask it. You could ask Siri something and you could ask Google something and Google was better every time. Absolutely. They they have been way better. Yeah, than, they've been capturing data. And, since and probably better than, than Amazon and, or Apple on just the Ability to ask it a question and get an answer that you're looking for. Yeah, to, to me, and we just got it, so I'm trying it out. Again, we use the Google products. That's the other thing. So we have Google My Business, the business suite. Sure. So I'm just interested. So for there, asking a reminder goes into my, my system of my reminders for my business. So, But again, um, so far, and this is just a little tidbit, is whether you realize this. So Big Lots sells off-brand speakers that run Alexa. So they're licensing the tech to others. Basically, I, a Bluetooth yeah, speaker. Yeah, it's a Bluetooth has, speaker. Which, so you, sorry, they did that originally with higher end Sonos speakers, right? And now, but now they're it's doing the it with cheaper. So cheaper. I got Insignia, which is one of those off brands at Best Buy. So I got a really good speaker for like forty bucks, and it runs Google Home. So I'm like, okay, because I didn't want to spend ninety nine, but I didn't want a little hockey puck. So I'm like, okay, I'll give this a shot. So right, because you could buy the hockey puck for thirty or forty, depending yeah. on when you get it, or you could buy. The the big one's the, like 99. The big one, the Echo, is 100 or more, or you can even go get the Sonos one, which was like 200. But now they are putting it in better speed. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, I would say a foot tall or whatever it is, you know, 10 inches. So I'm, I like the quality of the speaker. Um, I mean, I'll keep the listeners updated on this. But I, from what I've talked with my clients that have both, I had one that came in yesterday, and they're our age, and they're like, yeah, our kids love to ask it questions. It's like this, this, That's this, a, this, and it's that intelligence. It does seem like, though, when you go to, you look at the way people are marketing with them, it's, Alexa must just be in a way more homes than Google. I yeah, I was going to say, I mean, to, we know this, Alexa got out into the front race. There was a lot of, because Google basically gave away the farm on the homes here in that last, like, first quarter around Christmas and stuff. But... Again, I think that where Google has it in spades is they have that AI data on just people's behavior and that knowledge. So we all know data is the, the, uh, you know, the currency for right. value right now. And I think Amazon thought, well, you know, we tie it into our marketplace and people will buy things. I have no desire to buy something by voice. No, and I was going to say, just, like, that's... it's just as easy for me to open up my right. phone and do a quick you know, one click swipe. Right. So some of those like try on things. I mean, with, how much could you screw up by doing? I know all their initial commercials. That's what they showed was people 
reordering toilet paper or reordering Diet Coke or something like that. No, no, no it's not. I've got no desire. But I will. I, I do like making a list. Right. That, that's I get great. that. I get that. Or I, actually, I do have a thermostat. I do have a smart home thermostat. See, and I have that, a, that is my next thing is I, I have on my Amazon wish list. So, again, I'm an Amazon. Like, we use Prime. We use it all the time. I use it for Generate. I use it for us. We have our whole video library in Amazon. So it's like part of it is, and you know this, is like we play in all the flower gardens, and we're yeah. always trying to find them to play right. nice. And as you know, not everybody likes to play nice. All right, I want to end on this because I think it's interesting. Uh, there had been some teasers out there that FaceTime on Apple was going to be expanding so you could do group calls with up to, listen to this, 32 people in the newest iOS update. Well, sounds like after it was introduced at the Worldwide Developers Conference that it is going to be delayed. They haven't offered any explanation, but evidently it's going to be coming out a little bit later. They were hoping to see it in September. I don't know when this is going to come out now. I Eventually it will, maybe later this fall. To me, I mean, I know Skype is out there. I know Google Hangouts is out there, some of these other things. But it feels like this is going to be a big kind of revolutionary, one of the bigger revolutionary things that they've had through a change in iOS Absolutely. for a while. I mean, you know, Skype was... Planet? Yeah, oh, I don't know. man, I mean, Skype was the thing that got out in front. And, like, we actually don't use Skype that much because, um, like, we've ended up using more of the join.me and the Zooms and stuff. Like, I just did a Zoom conference call. Dude, for our family, I mean, again, if we're the iPhone family, I mean, we've got like 15 family members that have iPhones. So I've always been impressed on low bandwidth. FaceTime has worked really well. Yes, I, I agree. Mean, this is the thing that, you know, Google has always struggled with is they don't have a great product. They've kind of piddled around with different ones. But I tell you what, um, FaceTime is kind of one of those like other than like not like Siri. It's good. It's solid. It's it's effective. So to me, having that group capability, dude. That's a that's a no brainer. And I don't know how Google and and maybe Google Hangouts has been doing this well for a while, or maybe Skype. And I use I Hangouts, just, but it's just do you, do you use Hangouts on mobile in the way that Facebook? No, talking I mean about? if you recall, they tried to do it with Google Plus. So again, this is kind of that tip of Google like tries like they dabble things, they kill things. So, you know, they've been a little half baked in their commitment. Um, but I'm I'm like you. I'm all, I think that's a great advantage. That'll be big. That'll be interesting. We'll review it when it uh, when it comes out. Give it a try. All right, Jason. We're out of time. Thank you for spending some time with me. We'll see you in a couple weeks. All right. Sounds good, Jack. There you go, Jason Peterson. Generate marketing. If you missed any of the conversation, go to KLIA.com.